Hey everybody, this is Fedor from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. You guys already clicked the thumbnail, so you know we're doing ABS on the Aquila, Aquila, Aquila 3D printer by Vox Lab. All right, uh, for this video, I went ahead and got myself a roll of inland ABS in black. Uh, they have these solid rolls, no windows, no transparency, so you kind of have to guess towards the end here, but they do have somewhat reliable filament, at least in PETG and PLA, as far as I'm finding. So uh, hopefully their ABS is just as good. We'll see. I've actually never printed with ABS before. I've always stuck to PLA and PETG. PETG if I need a higher temperature prints. So this is gonna be an interesting test for me as well. Um, I know sometimes these things require a, um, an enclosure. Um, this isn't an enclosure, this is just a rack. Uh, if we will end up needing something like that, I can cover all four of the sides uh, with bag or um, uh, plastic or, or a cardboard just as a temporary solution to see if that's an issue. But for this video, my objective is to see what this printer can do completely stock. And I want to provide a, uh, a profile for you guys to try if you have a roll of ABS to try it out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the PETG profile, editing a couple things. It's already up 230 degrees on the hot end, so we need to turn up the bed temperature to a scorching 100 degrees uh, C. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna cut off the parts cooling fan to try to mitigate the potential uh, warping uh, that ABS tends to suffer from. So let's give that a try and let's see how it prints. All right, I'll see you guys on the other side. Had some preliminary notes while the second layer is now going. Uh, first thing you might notice is I have some glue on this bed and uh, that's because I did have some issues uh, with it sticking. So I had to use my arch nemesis, the glue stick. Um, I tend to avoid these things because typically it's a temperature or uh, a bed leveling issue. Uh, however, this bed seems to be leveled perfectly at the moment and the temperatures are at 230 and 100, which I think should be a okay. I did try hotter and on both the hot end and the bed without much luck. Um, otherwise, it's going on pretty good. I can tell that it is over extruding a hair, uh, which is interesting, um, which could be easily fixed with flow. I'm going to let this one go and see how it ends up. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll tweak, keep, keep tweaking the settings for the second or third print that I'm planning on doing. Uh, however, for this one, Everything seems to be sticking really nicely with the glue stick and the uh, layers are going on just fine outside of just the, the hair of over extrusion. Uh, let me see if I can get you closer to see. You can kind of see that the layers are overlapping themselves um, a bit too much. So that's something we can, we can, uh, we can easily change with flow. I don't necessarily want to adjust the E-steps because all the other filaments were printing perfectly fine. I don't want to adjust them just because of this one. So a problem like this could be solved with a little bit less flow. At the moment, if you were asking me, I would set it to 95% instead of 100 just to see what would happen. So let's give this thing a couple more layers, see where it goes, and uh, let's see if we can get a print out of this. the print is done and I heard some really loud cracks while it's cooling which means the uh, the build plate is nice and cold oh yeah definitely cold the glue just released it pretty much perfectly um, let's get a closer look so this is printing at a 0.28 layer height and the layers just look gorgeous 
So it is over extruding just the hair. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of an overlap on these layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it probably to about 95. Here's a good look at the back of the layer lines. Um, if we look at it dead on, let's look at the edges here. Right there, let's see if we can, right around where my thumb is right now, let's see if I can focus. You can see it's not 100% uniform. I'm guessing that's just one of the things you have to overcome with ABS is shrinking and whatnot. But outside of that, it does look really nice and it feels really, really rigid. So this is just so you guys know, this is a paper towel holder. I'm printing this because I'm gonna mount this underneath a, uh, a shelf uh, for my garage. It gets really hot in there and cold in there. And um, ABS would be a perfect material uh, for things like this. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is my first ABS print. The printer, I mean, you guys are looking at it pretty good. I'm gonna change the seam. I'm gonna put the seam in the back at a corner so it doesn't end up doing this type of thing. Um, I'm going to turn down the flow just a bit and uh, let's start another print. So far so good. Let's go. Quick pro tip, if you want to make it really easy to uh, preheat uh, the printer, uh, there's settings in here that lets you preheat for ABS specifically. To set up the correct temperatures there, go to uh, settings, Go to temperature, go down to preheat ABS setting, and set the nozzle to 230, the, the bed to 100, and ABS to zero. That seems to be pretty good. So when we go back, and if we go to control, heat to ABS, you can see I'm already doing it, but you can see it sets this to 230 and 100, and starts setting you up for a good print. Pro tip. Here's the second print. The texture on the top is definitely improved at 96%. Uh, um, not having the um, seam here is also really nice. It just hides it in the corner in the back. So definitely a much improved print. The only thing I really don't like, it's unrelated to the ABS. It's actually the glue. Um, it kind of like ruins the glass like texture. Uh, it's still really smooth to the touch. Like you don't really feel this. It looks much worse in the video than it actually is. But um, I definitely don't like that. So I'm definitely going to try to work on getting it to stick without the glue. But hey, first print, getting the settings dialed. This is great. The quality is amazing. It's uh, extremely rigid, like I mentioned before. Like there is zero give in this piece whatsoever. Um, so that's really, really nice. This machine is working very well. And this inland filament, you know, I don't really have anything else to compare it to. This is my first ABS print, but um, I see no issues here. It printed really easily. I didn't have to, um, I didn't really have to do too much work. The over extruding is kind of interesting. Maybe the temperature is a little too high at 230. Um, but uh, I, I don't really need to mess with it at the moment. This seems pretty good. Um, so I'm going to print the third piece. Um, you can probably hear this thing roar. It's uh, ready for printing. Um, yeah, so let's see how the third piece comes out and then we'll go to the conclusion.
All right, and just like that, we printed ABS successfully on a stock Aquila, Aquila 3D printer by Vox Lab. Um, yeah, guys, inland ABS did perfectly fine. Um, I don't have anything to directly compare it to, but you loaded the filament in and printed with very minimal effort. Uh, the over extrusion was easily overcome with uh, flow settings. The adhesion was easily overcome with uh, uh, glue. Uh, you could use hairspray. Uh, you could water this stuff down to make it smoother so that this texture is a little bit better if that's something that bothers you. Um, you could try the other side of the glass, the textured side of the glass. So that might work uh, much better than the bare glass. Um, yeah, there's lots, of, lots more things to experiment with. And so far, I'm very happy that I was able to uh, successfully print with just very minimal effort. So inland ABS, I can easily recommend it. It was easy to do. Uh, the printer, this thing has been just absolutely killing everything that I throw at it. It's so easy to recommend this printer. It's such a good deal. One thing to add, if you're going to be printing at these higher temperatures, 230 plus, I highly recommend you swap out that PTFE tube to a Tech Boss uh, PTFE tube because you can go all the way up to 300. So that automatically opens a huge door of other type of filaments with this printer and it's a really inexpensive modification. Uh, throw a link in the description for you if you guys want to check that out and I will be installing that on this machine after I do some other things. Um, because I'm not always printing higher temperature stuff, uh, but I will be uh, now that I know that it can do all this stuff. It just It's nice to know and nice to have um, and uh, nice to know that the PTFE tube can handle higher temperatures. So that's nice. Um, what else can I say? Uh, you know, the, the, I didn't get any warping. Um, everything is really straight. I think what I was noticing before was before the plastic actually cooled down. Um, I am printing at a 0.28 millimeter uh, height, which does print a little bit faster. And you do see a little bit more of a layer line. But honestly, I really like that texture. Um, it looks really nice. And it feels super solid. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just overall really happy with not only the print, but the fact that I can just throw these different things at the printer and uh, hit print and, you know, it just, it just works uh, right away, you know? Look at that. That's great. Um, yeah, guys. So that's a huge thumbs up for me for both the uh, ABS filament by Inland and the Aquila 3D printer by Vox Lab. If you guys think that somebody would find this video useful, uh, send them a link. Uh, give me a like. And uh, just like always, I'll see you guys in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.